Hello. Yay. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. You look very nice. Able to join you. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, thank you for that message earlier on. I wouldn't have had a clue. I would have been just sat here looking at the phone, waiting for it to ring. Well, I didn't realise. I um, someone at the beginning told me that I can request people to yeah. be in the video. So I didn't realise. I thought you had to request to come into my video. Well, here so, I am. So it's new to me as well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How's Not life bad. in quarantine? Like it's okay. Do you know what? It has its good days and its bad days. It's up and down. It's very strange for us because we're in a place we don't know at all. Like myself and Rob and Mamma Mia stopped. We just kind of stuck a pin in a map literally and went, right, where can we go that's kind of close to London in case one of us needs to fly somewhere, but that's not going back into the city. And we've ended up in Lincolnshire, which is like beautiful. But yeah, it's grand. It's lovely. And how did it work, like, when you found out we were going into lockdown? Were you still on tour with Mamma Mia? Yeah, or... we were the last. We were, I think, the night that the West End shut down, the rest of the theatres were in the country followed suit, and we were in Hull, and basically all of our dressing rooms were underground, and we had no signal, and it was just approaching the half, and everybody came out of the dressing rooms, and we were like, what are we doing? Are we going up? Are we not? We had people in the venue, and our management just went, do it and we all knew that it was going to be the last one which was so bizarre because all of a sudden half your head is on the show and then the other half is going oh my god what am I going to do what am I going to do about digs where are we going to live where we... do you know what I mean yeah. so it was so weird so I think there was only four theatres in all of the UK that had shows that night so right. it was the last Mamma Mia to play yeah at least you had a chance to do it one last time. We did. And like, obviously, by that stage, nobody knew whether we were going to actually be, if it was for a week, if it was for two weeks, if it was for a month. Um, but there's a couple of people who are leaving our tour um. early. So in the back of our head, I won't say who, because I don't think they've announced anything or anything yet. But in the back of our head, I knew it was the last time, oh. probably, that we were going to do it together. So it was really weird. Yeah, because it's going on for quite a while, isn't it? And they've uh, rescheduled the dates that you aren't able to do into next year. Until the year after next, twenty twenty two. Yes, yeah. I didn't even pick up on that when I saw yeah. it. Yeah, I just say hi to everybody. There's people saying hello to me. Hello, hello, hello. I can't and, even uh, keep up. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm going to talk to you. I can't read all of them, but I am getting your hair, your hair. I know. I'm going to get so much trouble. I did this today, <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, um, so 2022, so, they're adding on those dates. They're going back to those venues, yeah. But at least they're rescheduling it. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's um, Mamma Mia. In some ways, it's really lucky because Mamma Mia has been around for so long. It's probably one of the more robust shows. Do you know what I mean? That, like, yeah. they can weather this storm, I hope. So they, they have tours and venues planned, and there's such a strong following that they'll be back. Yeah. So. It's all just so, like, even when they do reopen, you just think... You just don't know how long this is going to take to nah, nah. get over it, so do you? Weird. And there's so many, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning and she works in the technical department and there's so many parts of this that you don't even think about where you're going, like all of the trucking companies that move all the sets are all going to be needed on the same day at the mm -hmm. same time and all the technical people and all the rehearsal spaces because, you know, we can't all just walk back on a stage. So when they give us the green light, there's so many logistics of things that it's just going to be mental. Yeah. And even I saw Andrew Lloyd Webber talking the other day and he was saying, even if we are reopen in September, Cinderella is due to open in the West End in October. He said, but what you don't think about is right now we're supposed to be building the sets and the scenery. He's like, no one's doing that. So no, no, even no, though you think... I mean, so many moving parts, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and also, kind of... I think for some of the venues as well, like they, they, they would open maybe for us, but then they might have two dark weeks after that. So then it doesn't make sense for them to reopen and shut down again. So it's, it's so many uh, plates in the air. So I think all of us, all you can do is just make peace with it and go, what will be, will be. And some days that's harder than others, do you know what I mean? So, um, but you've been keeping busy in quarantine and you guys have filmed a uh, like a co living room concert okay. film. It was supposed to be like a concert. 
then it turned into a music video. Then we thought we were like the best photographers, video makers in the world. Then we were shooting footage. Then we were like putting on harmonies. Then we were doing different camera angles. And we totally lost the run of ourselves. And we've made, I don't know what you call it, but I'm so proud of it. There's been so much time and love and passion got into it. And it kept us so busy. It is a living room concert really recorded. Um, and we did it over the period of two weeks where we had to re-rehearse the songs and relearn them. And we did some tracks all through our laptop and garage bands with back and vocals. And then over different nights when we'd all of that done, we just stood in the living room, did our hair and makeup, put a t-shirt on, sang a couple of songs, had a drink, watched some Netflix. And the next Amazing. night we did it again. And you know what I mean? So it was lovely. Yeah. I um, watched I watched about half of it already. Um, and it's got like a like a 90s indie acoustic vibe yeah. would that be would <laughs> that be right that. we don't we just i think a lot of our songs were 90s children well i certainly am do you know what i mean and um yeah definitely we've got between the two of us we've definitely developed a style of writing that does fit that kind of era um, so yeah, and obviously everybody looks better in black and white, don't they? So <laughs> the whole thing is in like, Sepia is our new best friend. <laughs> yeah, I've only found out today that you can put filters on the Instagram Live. Really? Apparently. Ah, oh, okay. Um, so it's called Grounded? It is, and it's, I think it's like 15, 16 songs. Most of them are original, some are covers. And uh, to intersperse with, like little bits from us about where we're staying, about why we wrote them, what inspired them. A lot of them were written last year and we did them in a concert in the Crazy Cops, which we only have filmed from fans and bits and pieces on iPhone. So they kind of would have been lost. So it was really yeah. cool for us to now at least have this for ourselves, you know? Yeah. yeah. And where can people get it? So you can get it on uh, either either of our tw our Twitter pages or our Facebook pages or our Instas, we both have links to them. And it's literally, we did, first of all, we released the Crazy Cox one, the Vision of You. And that was for, I'd seen you have a little um, donate link as well for the funds for freelancers. Yeah. And that raised so much money for that. And we were like, that is incredible. So when we'd done our bit, we were like, okay, well, this is, we're in lockdown and we are in, we're paying for this beautiful cottage that we're staying in. But like, uh, we put a PayPal link out for this, which people have been donating 10 pounds to which is on our pages as well you just go on there click and we send you everything mm. so, yeah. it's all on i think it's on the news section of west end wilma as well oh, so amazing. people can yes, go on that, that. Thank and you. um yeah do check it out everyone because um it is it's really really nice really different yeah, no, it it's, it's, it's unique isn't it sorry so yeah. say hi oh hello hi, <laughs> He makes a, a cameo in the video as well on the beach. He's our shining star. He's like, <laughs> my mother watched it and she was like, I hope you're paying that dog commission. I hope you've got oh. a good collar or something. I'm like, yeah. Um, I want to talk quickly uh, back to Mamma Mia because I came to see it in Paris. Oh, and yeah. you were playing at this huge, like... Arena. It was an arena, but it was kind of like a stadium. It was... Yeah, it was mental. It was huge. Yeah. How did that feel performing a theatre show in such a kind of Wembley Arena environment. Did it feel different? Yeah, it was really bizarre. And it was weird because the audience felt very far away from you anyway, because it was so big. But also the language as well, do you know what I mean? Because obviously we did the show completely in English with subtitles. So there was that kind of jarring thing as well where you would land a joke and then you'd get a ripple of laughter 10 seconds later where yeah, the yeah. audience had read it, gone back to what you had delivered and then patched it up in their heads. It was really, really weird. But the only thing I'll say about it is that if anything can fill a stadium like that, it is the music of ABBA. Because yeah. once the music kicks in, you just go, it was made for those kind of big audiences. Like, and they're such strong songs. So I think that made it um, survive, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was amazing to see it in such a different a different environment to what we're used to in the smaller theatres. Yeah. So that's such an amazing thing about touring as well, which is like you go into a different venue, it's like it, changed, it changes everything so much. It really keeps you on your toes, you know, of like the yeah. different sizes and some of the beautiful venues we've played, particularly in Bradford as well, like where the audience is there in the dress circle and it's just like you can reach out and touch them. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I want to 
we've got had loads of questions come in for right. you. Um, so I want to just do a few of those. If you could have tea with Donna and Sloan, what would you ask them? Oh God, I'd ask them advice for me. Like, am I doing it right? Where? Oh God, that's a good question. Mm. I, I'd probably ask them for like um, their top three tips on life or something, what they've learned. Because yeah. And uh, how do you approach songwriting when you're doing your own stuff? You got a, a certain way that you write? Yeah, I I have lyrics scribbled everywhere. If I find something nice, I, I write it down. I bought a book a few years ago, which is battered now to bits. But on um, if I have it in my head, I have to get it down. Sometimes if I don't have that on me, I will send myself an email draft, mm -hmm. and then I always have it. But the song title is the subject title. It might disappear, and if it comes back to me, I can search it. But usually, it starts with Rob finding a hook line, and Rob is amazing at vowel sounds. Like right. I always try and tell a story. But Rob is very, no, no, that sound here needs to be a, oh, wow. And I'm like, all right. And I find words to fit with. And then I make the story happen with the link. But he finds the music. So, yeah, it's kind of a, a balance and act of all of that. And this is a difficult one, I imagine. But would you rather write and perform your own music or stay in theatre? You know, um, at the moment, this always happens to me. When I play a role, I get so sucked into it. Um, and it becomes my everything. And I start dressing and thinking as that person. I really like to adore it. And then I never have time to get into my own writing. But this gap has really made me believe in our music again as well. And like even since Grounded stuff, it was a bit of a labor kind of going back into it. Going, like, we have to relearn these songs. But like we've been writing pretty much every day. Just right. little bits and pieces. And we're writing new material. And I'm going, I'd love to. I'm enjoying having the space to think about that. So yeah, I and I think at the moment I'm more into my own stuff. Okay. Um, and somebody else asked, have you picked up any new skills in quarantine? I know three chords on the guitar. It's <laughs> as far as you've got. Yeah, that's as far as I got. I I really have no excuse. I really want to be able to play that properly. Um, I've been carrying it around with me since September since I got it. So. It's so hard, though, to find the motivation to just do anything. I think we were saying when I apologised for how long it took to reply to an email. It's like, got no, no excuse. No, but that's but... what I'm saying to you as well. It's like, some days you just can't. Mm. It's like, it's, yeah, it is, it's really funny. And Disney Plus has been great for that, by the way. For the days that you can't do anything, I've literally just gone, right, today. Yeah. Maybe the movie, that's it. And shut the blinds. Yeah. Sometimes just getting out of bed is a, an achievement right it really now. Is. It really, really is. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's uh, And I think what I'm learning, especially even just going out for a walk with the dog and going out and the people that you kind of even, you know, keep in social distancing, whatever, but the people you meet, everybody is so on their own journey with this stuff at the moment. Mm. Some days, even friends in WhatsApp groups, and stuff, some days people are up and they're positive. And then some days other people just can't handle that and just don't don't want it and don't feel it and I think you just kind of have to listen to yourself and where you're at and just go right that's what today's going to be and talking about that have you got any advice for people that are maybe on their own um like how can people stay motivated I don't think you need to stay motivated as well and there's actually so much advice going around at the moment of like some stuff I really needed to hear like you know this is how you can do this and this is how you can and then I read an article where it was like you don't need to be doing anything like just relax and just take this time for what it is and like i said everybody's going just listen to your head if you mm -hmm. don't want it and same with me with exercise if you don't want to do it today don't do it just don't do it you're i won't yeah no but you know what i mean i have to i had a because i find if i do that and i try and make myself run because i feel like i should i have to get mm -hmm. out and do my half an hour that that's when i'll injure myself or something my body will just have a tantrum and just quickly before we go, everybody's asking, what are your favourites on Disney Plus? Oh, God. Um, well, I watched a really lot of old stuff. Homeward Bound was a film that I used to absolutely adore as a kid, um, and which I was having a total meltdown a couple of mm. years ago. And, like, literally, that was what started it off. Rob literally just went, right, get into bed, put on a laptop, went, right, Homeward Bound, there you go. Just left me alone with the movie for an hour and a half. I was like, I feel better now. Oh. I love that. I love that. And Lady and the Tramp, we watched that through the day as well. Yeah. 
And somebody told me I have to watch Newsies, which is on there too. So yes. I haven't had a chance to look at that. And yet. Encore, everybody's talking about with Kristen Bell. Um, mm-hmm. Apparently it's like, I was just talking to Luke Bear about it. Apparently it's like people that were in films like Bugsy Malone or shows um, as children. Pretty and early. now they kind of recreate it as adults. Oh God, oh wow. Apparently. Um, oh, I, but I, think it's, I think it's called Encore. Um, oh. So that might be worth checking out. Yeah. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, Sharon. Thanks it's time has flown by. Um, and as we were saying, um, there is a link in my bio to the Fund for Freelancers Fund, if oh, anybody yeah. can spare it's a couple true. of pounds. Amazing, like amazing. I love our little community, it's fabulous. Before yeah. I go really quickly, because I did hear you say that you're not um, drinking, mm. um, which we were for a long time and falling back into it now, but we did two or three months and gin, Seed lip. I don't know if you've had it yet, but it is amazing. I don't like gin. All right, okay. As a yeah, rule. That's for you. I know. So, oh, but I have tried man, that. Yeah. There's a, oh, I'll, I'll email it to you because I found a website which is actually delivers non alcoholic substitutes for everything, and they're so good. I am going to send that, you know, I'm going to find it. Okay, send it over to me. I'll have a look. Uh, but yeah, I've done a week today, and I'm going to try and do at least another week, and then. Maybe treat myself to a glass of wine. Do it. Do it. All right. Thank you so much for uh, talking to us. And uh, look after yourselves. Stay safe. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thanks for having me. I don't have to do it, do I? No. Okay, great. Right. Next up, I think we have Hayley Tamadon.